Hi all, welcome back to today's show and tell. So everybody thinks that they have the best desk setup. You'll find tons of videos, even some YouTube channels almost solely dedicated in showing off gaming or productivity desk setups. I have to admit, I have made a few changes to my desk lately, which is probably a mess to you, but it's actually the tidiest it's been in years. There is one title though that I think I'm worthy of just outright claiming. This is the ultimate Samsung deck setup. So in case you don't know what Samsung DeX is, it's a feature found on, you guessed it, Samsung devices, typically on the higher end handhelds or tablets that support display out via USB-C. It allows users to connect their devices to a monitor and enables users to have a desktop-like experience. Think of it like having a Windows PC on your phone. So the device I'm using for Samsung DeX is a Samsung Galaxy S10 from 2019. It's a really good phone, actually one of, if not, my favorite generation of Samsung phones. More on that in a future video. This particular device is a 512 gigabyte model. I only have that size of a model because the seller sent me this larger storage device model by accident, score. Unfortunately, along the way, the camera was damaged and the battery life on it isn't the greatest anymore, which makes it a perfect candidate as a DeX companion. Samsung DeX is supported on the flagship Samsung models, starting from the Galaxy S8. So if you have one lying around or if you really want to have a play yourself, you can grab an S8, which isn't too expensive these days. But keep in mind, they are not receiving security updates anymore, but that's a topic for another video. The S9 might lose its security update soon and the S10 probably still has a, as a wild guess, two years. So the basics of a deck setup are a monitor that supports at least HDMI or display over USB-C. For a standard HDMI monitor, you'll need a USB-C to HDMI cable to plug your phone into your monitor, which you can pick up off eBay or Amazon for not too much. Preferable to that is a USB-C hub, which supports power delivery and has a USB-A ports to plug in mouse and keyboard if you prefer not to use Bluetooth. Or you can do it the ultimate way, one cable and that's it. My keyboard and mouse are connected via the 2.4 GHz USB dongle, which provides better response times compared to Bluetooth. What sorcery is this? Let me explain. The monitor I have here is a Gigabyte M27Q, a 1440p 170Hz monitor with a built-in KVM switch. Link in the description if you want to check it out. In case you don't know what a KVM switch is, it's a keyboard, video and mouse switch which allows you to have multiple devices connected to the monitor which you can easily switch between and have the same set of peripherals plugged in. Meaning, you don't have to unplug your keyboard and mouse and plug it into a different device every time you want to switch. At the back of the monitor, we have two USB-A cable ports for your keyboard and mouse plugs, a 3.5mm audio port which you can plug your speakers in to output sound, a USB-B port which plugs into my main desktop, and a USB-C port which I'm using to plug into my Galaxy S10. Just touching on audio quickly, you can have your sound output from your device to speaker via the 3.5mm jack if your phone has it. You can also connect Bluetooth headphones, or if you have a monitor like mine, then also through the monitor audio jack. When I want to switch between my main desktop PC or my Galaxy device, I just give it the good old rusty trombone reach around and press this KVM button and it'll switch over. Super neat, right? The next cool trick is that the USB-C port actually has 15 watt power delivery, which makes it sufficient for powering phones. The result is one cable out that does it all. So now into showing you what it's all about, I'm going to make sure that Samsung DeX is on. Now I'm going to plug it in and voila. I do have two of the Gigabyte M27Q monitors. DeX supports up to 1440p, which is great, but unfortunately doesn't support dual monitors, so you'll be stuck with one. It's a shame for me as I work in finance and dual monitors are a must for productivity. So this is the desktop environment of DeX, and as you can tell, it's very Microsoft Windows-like. It's very clean, and I like it. Keep in mind the way that you set up your app layout on the desktop here won't affect your phone tile layout, which is great. Just to give an overview of the taskbar, you've got your app drawer. Home button to minimize everything. Your back button. Keyboard to open it up on your device. Volume. Screenshot. Notifications. The pull down menu. And lastly, your calendar. First things first, I'm going to go into Dex Labs and enable Force Apps to resize. This will allow you to maximize Windows like you would on a normal desktop PC, even if the app doesn't support it. 
So all your apps from your smartphone will be available to use and your notifications will come through like they normally would. If you use WhatsApp, for example, that is going to be more convenient than using the web WhatsApp where you need to scan the QR code constantly. The other beauty is, and this might be obvious to you, but it's a phone, so you can make phone calls. Microsoft Office is also available on Dex. I use Excel a lot in my work and having a quick look, it does have less functionality compared to the Windows desktop version, but should work fine for most people. What's great is that most Windows shortcuts do work, Alt F4, Alt Tab, which is great for Windows users. I've actually written this script on this device. Luckily, the Samsung File Manager allows you to connect to network devices, but I did have trouble saving the dock into a network drive. So in the end, I had to save it to my OneDrive. In this instance, I've connected the phone to my NAS in order to access all my YouTube files. I don't think I'll attempt to video edit on this device as I don't think most people would be doing that from a day-to-day -day use. Printing and scanning can be done on your device as long as you download the corresponding app of your printer manufacturer. I was able to test my brother laser printer, which worked out just fine. Do keep in mind compatibility may vary depending on the age of your printer. So make sure you do check out what model your printer is if you plan to go down this route. Plex app also works great, so if you have a media server or you're just suckling on the teat of somebody who does, you're going to have a great experience. Gaming now, keep in mind Android games controls can vary. Some have native support for controllers, which is fine. Others that just require touching or clicking should do fine with a mouse and keyboard. But for others with touchscreen controls, you might want to download a key mapper like Octopus. I've put some gameplay up on screen running GeForce Now and local game streaming off my desktop PC via Parsec. When it comes to gaming, depending on where you are in the world, you will be relying on game streaming services available to you. So do some research on that because you will probably have a much better experience than us folk down under, but we've only really got GeForce now. And for me lately, it hasn't been giving me a solid experience with my NBN 50. I'm noticing some real choppiness. Otherwise, emulation of console titles might be your thing or Android game options that you might already be playing. While Parsec is great for streaming if you have a desktop PC, I feel like it kind of defeats a purpose as the point of this is to have Dex as a desktop replacement, not as an additional device. All in all, I think Dex is really great and is becoming a viable desktop replacement for those who might lack the space or are looking for an ultra minimalist setup. There were very little or no reliability issues at all in my week of testing, though as mentioned there are some limitations, no dual screen, gaming limited to cloud game streaming or Android titles, and the reduced functionality of the Microsoft suite. But in all honesty, I think Dex and its alternatives are the future. A 3-in-1 device, a phone, a tablet, and a PC. That's a dream. I guess you could say the Galaxy Z Fold line is probably the closest we have to that dream at the moment, which I might pick up once a deal pops up. There are other phones outside of the Samsung Spectrum that support display out over USB-C. I'll link the wiki down below so you can check them out. I've got an LG phone on its way to me and I will definitely check out its desktop mode on that as well. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss that video. But seriously, wow. I'm really surprised how good of an experience it's been. I don't think I'm able to make it my dedicated device because of the limitations I mentioned, but hey, if those limitations don't bother you, then definitely give it a try. There are clear benefits of a more seamless experience using it as a dual device. Links below for my gear in the description section below. That's all for me for this video. New videos every week. Until the next show and tell, bye bye.